Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. I'm here to ask and answer one simple question. WTF is Ridge Racer Unbounded? To start with, is Unbounded even a word? I'm trying to figure this one out. Unbound certainly is. Unbounded? It might be. I better check the Oxford English Dictionary after this, but whatever the case. It's called Ridge Racer, and I've got to ask you this. When is Ridge Racer not Ridge Racer? When it's made by Bugbear. If you don't know who Bugbear are, you should probably do a little bit of research, because they are responsible for Flat Out 1, Flat Out 2, and Flat Out Ultimate Carnage, which are, as far as I'm concerned, some of the most fun destruction derby-style racing games in the damn world. Now they have been contracted to make a Ridge Racer game, and as a result, it's half Ridge Racer, half Flat Out. And all pretty cool as a direct result of that. It's also got a bit of Trackmania thrown into the mix. Now, the question you might ask is, well, why? Why has it got Trackmania thrown into it? Well, it's got a track creator built in. And it actually has a system whereby, through the world system here, I can go to someone's city. We could go to... I need a word that I can actually pronounce here. There we go. We could go to 1200 City and actually do a bunch of racing challenges in there. Or LOL City in How Do I Drive. And these are going to have custom tracks with custom challenges that you have to meet. You also have these other challenges here. One hour challenges, six hour and 24 hour. You meet these, you gain points in order to raise your rank and unlock different items. I believe you, well, you definitely unlock cars. I know this for a fact. You can also unlock different events, and I believe you can unlock parts for the track creator, as far as I can tell. If we go to view progress, for instance, you can see player stats. I have two domination points because I've dominated two events here. It's a massive, great, stonking awards browser, which also includes Steam achievements. But the question is how does it control? How does it play? Let's find out. Let's head on over to Shatter Bay. This is the main single player component of this actual game and Shatter Bay is this big city. You might notice that I haven't finished a single thing. There's a reason for that because <laughs> it's not exactly what I class as easy. Let's go into this and let's actually try and finish first, second or third in it. Alright, I've unlocked a couple of different cars. Now, in true Ridge Racer style, these would appear to be clones of existing vehicles. Damn if I can... I think that's a Mustang, by the looks of it. We might go with this one. There we go. That's a little bit quick. And then you, you can pick your color if you so desire. All right. So what's it all about? Well, I said half Ridge Racer, half flat out. There's a reason for that. So Ridge Racer is known for one thing. Drifting. And giant enemy crabs. But mostly drifting. In this game... There is a lot of drifting, but there is also a mechanic which allows you to smash through enemy vehicles. And not just enemy vehicles, parts of the terrain as well. And it looks something like this. What does that remind you of? Yes, exactly. Burnout and Flat Out in particular. Uh, they're actually classed as frags in this game. Also, a lot of the terrain can be destroyed like this. Indeed, something along those lines. The weird thing about the terrain is it doesn't tell you what can be destroyed and what can't. As you go through the levels, you'll actually find objectives where it says, blow this up. And Lord knows who's giving you these objectives. Some kind of petulant teenager, I imagine. Shove him into the wall there. There we go. He's gone. Oh, okay. I'm about to be in some fairly serious trouble. I am on fire. Then suddenly right back to the back of the pack again. I tell you, Andy. They do not mess around in this game. They really don't. The AI is mean and unreasonable. But yeah, you can blow up parts of the terrain, but it doesn't seem to indicate which. Unless, of course, it gives you the objective like that. And then you've got to activate your power. You can then just smash straight through there. It gives you a shortcut as well as extra points for blowing up parts of the city. There we go. I can take him out in the process. It also kind of goes into a little bit of an auto-drive while you're smashing things, so it can actually be used at appropriate times to take difficult corners. <laughs> it is quite fun, though, is it not? The drifting is just as good as what you would expect from a Ridge Racer game. I don't know how many of you have actually played Ridge Racer games. Now, in this case, as you can see, if the power runs out before you end up hitting that, then you will just ram right into it and end up right at the back of the pack again. 
So the destruction mechanics need to be used with great care. If you don't, you'll end up right at the back, which is extremely unfortunate. Your car can take damage, as you've probably seen. It doesn't seem to take too much damage from actually hitting stuff, but it does take an awful lot of damage from hitting other cars or being hit by cars that are in power mode. I believe I slid off there. The chance of me catching these guys up is ridiculously low. And it's funny because a lot of different racing games, especially at the lower difficulty levels, you know, in the first race, will actually give you a chance at winning it. But no, this game doesn't care. It will screw you over hard. Which is exactly what it's currently doing. There you go. You can go into those. He's not going down yet. I'll have him in a sec when I've got power. There we go. Power has been enabled. So we can take him out in the process. Missed out on a shortcut there as well, but hey, we'll deal with it. You have to be somewhat careful with the drifting. What I've seen, car damage is... It's mostly superficial. I mean, it's kind of the burnout style of things, although not quite as extreme. I mean, flat out, actually, was pretty extreme in terms of car damage as well, and I guess they have had to rein that in just a little bit for a Ridge Racer game, which is unfortunate. I activated that far too sodding early! Oh... That, that's the worst thing about that. It really takes a lot of practice to actually learn when it's okay to press the power button and when it's not. And it will involve you learning the tracks because it doesn't necessarily give you a lot of warning before you find a shortcut or piece of destructible terrain. I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. I just think it gives the game a fairly high learning curve, which you might be surprised by considering it's a Ridge Racer game that are not exactly known for being difficult. As you can see, I'm all the way behind here, which is unbelievably depressing. This is like the third or fourth time this has happened as well. Now, is it going to... Oh, that's the wonderful thing about that, isn't it? It actually warps my car back onto the track if I end up getting a frag like that. So it's worth taking a risk to go into a wall as long as you can blow somebody up. Ah. All right, well, I've... Oh, no! I can't smash through that! Ah. Uh, uh, that's put me back in 12th again. That is so depressing. And oh, we're going to try that one again. But like I said, it's it's not an easy racing game at all. And you might think, oh, he's just bad at racing games. Yeah, I'm not particularly good at racing games. But the people I spoke to on Twitter had exactly the same problem. It's like, are you having problems getting past these events? Like, yes, actually, I am. Which is in itself kind of crazy. Not something I would necessarily expect on the first event versus AI, but... I have to imagine the game might... Oh, I didn't have any power. Damn it. The game, I think, is actually going to be even easier against real-life opponents than it is against the sodding AI. I do like the risk-reward, though, with the shortcut. I mean, this has kind of existed in previous racing games before because it's often hard to nail a shortcut. You've got to do a little bit of precision driving to get onto the shortcut. If you screw it up, then you end up in fairly serious trouble. In this case, it's even worse because if you don't time the power right when you're going through it, then you end up right at the back because the AI will not let you get away with that. Not at all. I would still like to see perhaps some more indication of what can be blown up and what can't because you'd be surprised. I mean, I can go through the supports of a bridge without power on, but send me into a fairly narrow wall and I just stop dead. And then there are some objects which just don't explode. So the inconsistency there is a little... It, it's either that or it's some visual feedback element that I'm missing. But whatever the case, I think there's a little bit of inconsistency there that could perhaps be addressed. In terms of the graphical fidelity of the game, and the game looks good, honestly. It's got a reasonable number of graphics options available... Oh, God. Available to you. Ooh, that sounds like fun. Let's do that. There we go. Handy we even get a frag in the process. I do like the fact that it's called frags as well. That's that's wonderful. That's a little bit of a blast from the past. It, it looks good. It, it's fairly generic for the most part. It looks pretty good. They, I would say that they went a little overboard with some of the lighting effects, especially on you know the sun in the background is often actually blinding. The lighting effects are a little bit obnoxious to the point where I actually prefer racing at night. And it's not too bad here, but once you come around the corner with the sunset, you, there's so much glare. It's just ridiculous. But that's more of a personal preference thing. It doesn't really stop you from racing at all. I just think they may have overdone it a little. That's more of an aesthetic choice than anything else. Oh, well, that was interesting. <laughs> I like the... I particularly like the power effect, actually. It looks absolutely fantastic. 
I come out on my final lap and I'm back in 11th again. Lord. It's an incredibly punishing game. I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. The, the guys that love their racing games and love a challenge, well, you're going to get it here, I can guarantee that. There's more than one kind of race as well. I'll show you something after this. It, not everything has this power mechanic in it. This is a, a domination race or something along those lines. And it does involve blowing up other people's cars as well as parts of the terrain. But there are drift races and things like that. And there's, there's actually races which are just nothing but infinite cars where you've got to blow up as many as possible, which are, they're fairly funny if a little bit shallow in their nature. You can set which events you want in your custom city as well. So that's something that you can actually design for yourself. Eight. It's depressing that that's actually good in comparison to my previous runs. I'm also depressed by the music in the background. Crash and burn. Yeah, thanks, guys. The, the I don't know if it's licensed or not, but I definitely don't recognize any of the artists, which is not necessarily a bad thing. I do prefer my racing games these days, unless, of course, you happen to have the burnout soundtrack to just have some unknown artists going in there. But whatever the case, even if you do fail it, you do get a score to advance you towards the next rank there. All right. So those are two are domination races, and that's a drift attack. Drift against time, gather drift points to win, go drifts give you time. And then you get a different set of cars here as well, depending on what event type you're going into. There's even a set of large trucks, which are rather amusing, and they, t needless to say, tend to be used for events that require smashing a lot of things. But yeah, these very drifty cars are pretty enjoyable to actually drive. Because you can get all sorts of points with it. There we go. And then you get a time extension based on how well you drifted, which is nice. It's good to see variety in a game like this. I mean, stuff like, I found, actually going back in the day to Need for Speed Underground had quite a lot of variety in terms of the kind of events that it had, drag races and drift attacks and all sorts of street races and things like that. And I think you need that in a game like this. It focuses a little bit more on the racing than something like Flat Out does, and of course Burnout as well, which is not necessarily a bad thing. That's actually probably a very good thing indeed. Because at least then you've got a game which distinguishes itself. It's not just Flat Out 3 at all. And it's not Trackmania, it's not Burnout, and it's not Ridge Racer. It is a game in and of itself. Alright, well, I got two stars on this, I guess, so that's not too shabby. As regards to controls... They're all right. I mean, I use a 360 pad for racing games pretty much all the time, but I've tried the keyboard controls. They're all right. You can't rebind them, but there are four different layouts available, so the chances are you'll probably find one that's to your liking. I'm not sure why they didn't just let you rebind them, though. I mean, that, that itself just seems kind of silly. All right. We've almost ranked up as well, which I mean... Ah. Okay. Excellent. So you can head to this area and then find other stuff. Shindo racing. Okay, this is pure racing, then. All right, sounds like fun. Let's do that. So here they replace your power bar with a nitro, which once again, very much a more traditional Ridge Racer experience if you want something like this. The smashing of the car is not really so important. You'll see these cars don't have health bars. Well, actually, never mind. They do have health bars. So I guess you can smash them, but you're not going to use the power bar for it. In regards to how you build your nitro, you can do it in a variety of different ways. Drifting is a good way to do it, but you can also draft as well oh for crying out loud i guess i'm not going through that then i'm surprised how quickly i exploded but yeah you can draft other cars you can do stunts and things like that although stunts are, are fairly difficult unless they're actually jumps available see the lighting on this twilight level is even more obnoxious good lord there we go i have some boost so let's kick it into high gear the sense of speed isn't there though that's something that i want to point out i mean it doesn't do speed anywhere near as well as Need for Speed or Burnout does. And I'm not really sure why that is. Flat Out never really did it all that well either. I don't find it too bad. I mean, it's not like you're moving at a snail's pace, but even with boost activated, it doesn't feel like you're going at a particularly high speed. It may be just the way that they have designed the actual graphics engine itself to not give you that sense of speed. I remember the best sense of speed I think I ever got in a racing game was probably the original Need for Speed Underground. Mostly because of the way they used motion blur in that game to great effect. Yeah, they, you know, they've got a little bit of blur here and there, but you don't feel like you're going to particularly high speed. I mean, supposedly I'm traveling 137 miles an hour here. I'm, 
I don't know about that. <laughs> Doesn't seem like it, certainly. But, I don't know, maybe that's just me. There we go. Well, I guess there's car damage, but you're not the one that's going to be inflicting it. If you head into walls too much, I suppose you might get quite a lot of that. Funny enough, I'm actually a little bit better at the traditional racing. I think that's more to the point because this game doesn't, this part, part of the game anyway, doesn't encourage you to smash into things. Which always tends to end badly for me. It is a very competent racing game, though. I'll, I'll give them that. You might be put off by the price point, however. It, it is a brand new AAA release, which has come to PC, which is surprising because Rich Racer generally does not do that. I think it's more because of the success of the flat out games on PC that this one ended up on PC as well. But more to the point, the game does cost 50 bucks or 30 pounds or 50 euros. So the Europeans actually have to pay a third more than anyone else, which is an absolute kick in the ass. I'd certainly say it's got the content to justify it as a full price game, but it may put a lot of people that maybe are not into this sort of thing but want to try it out off. So it seems like the kind of thing that those guys will wait for a sale on. It also seems to be all connected through a central server. I can't... Ah, God, I can't go through that. Why am I doing that? God, I've got to give up my first place because I'm an idiot. All right, anyway. There's a central server that governs all of this stuff, like the challenges and things like that. I do not know if that means that you can't play it offline. I haven't tried. I will look and see if I can find out some information on that and add it to an annotation after this commentary is done. It seems like you might not be able to, though, as a result of that. Come on, I need some boost. Give me some sodding boost. I should be able to get it on this drift. All right, come on. Get in there. I want one first place at least. Just sod off. <laughs> no. Balls to you. Aha. All right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Screw you and yeah, bloody hubcaps and bling and so forth. There we go. See, when it comes to proper racing, and do that. It's just the domination races are an absolute mess. But it's fun like that. You, know, you, you want a mess in a game like this. It's sitting in this weird place between Ridge Racer, Track Mania, and Burnout and Flat Out. And that should, I think, be a rank up as well. There we go. That gives me a new rank. I am member rank four. Ah, and there you go. There's the editor blocks that I was talking about. So, let's have a look at the actual editor. So, here's one I made earlier. I'm going to head over to my city. Well, actually, it seems to have deleted itself, so I guess I didn't make this earlier. But, all right, let's make a event, shall we? So what you've got here is you've got a basic editor, which any idiot could use, and then you've got advanced editor, which allows you to customize it. As far as I can tell, the advanced editor does not... Yeah, as you can see, you can't build it with the advanced editor. You've got to build the track first with the basic editor. Now, this is very, very easy to use. You've got two different views here. So if I wanted to go to this, let's just say I wanted to make a, a big track. So I'll probably have my starting point here. And then you'll see, right, okay, well, what have I got available to me? I've got a lot of different blocks that I could start with. But maybe I want to start with one of these two. So I'm going to go Steel Bridge Way or the Underpass. All right, so I'll plunk that down there. Simple as that. All right, so maybe I can have Street's Pass there. And a steel bridge way there. I want to make things just a little bit more interesting, however. You may have noticed, I believe that was actually on the previous map, and you'll also notice a little icon down there. That means there's a destructible target. So the target becomes the car shop there. So let's find what we've got in terms of corners, shall we? That seems like a fairly tricky corner. As you can see, you can build a track in minutes. It's not exactly what I call difficult can even actually stick a bridge in there if you like as you can see the bridge however is a little lengthy so we'll whack that in there and then we can connect it with a, a back alley I guess there you go and then we can just finish the track off I'm just gonna make it nice and easy I'll have old town turn there maybe I could then have it twist around. You could rotate them very easily here, as you can see. Have that little kind of chicane style thing. 
and go through the railway station here, as you can see. The track's starting to look a little dodgy here, but it should at least do the job by the looks of it. That one's a little bit long, so we can't use that. We'll need a nice straight bit there. Then whack a corner in. And I guess we can have Chinatown Alley, and there's one of these longer destructible things here. Especially it's like, it gets really awkward because if you use this view, you can't actually see what's under the menu, which is an incredibly stupid design choice. But you can, of course, end up going back to this view here. I've also somehow managed to get... This is now showing me a bunch of stuff that's locked. And that's, as you can see, mostly because I've picked a different area here. Which is annoying. There we go. Just just show me what I actually have. There we go. So I could even put a put a highway in there, I suppose. Not sure how I would do that. I guess there's supposed to be an entry point onto the highway. As you can see, there's actually a road cut off there. Ah, there we go. There's a highway entry. So, in theory... That's where the highway actually is, so... That's not going to work, is it? That's where it enters. But that's a big turn, so... Uh, no, I don't think we want that. Anyway, let's... I don't think there's any need to really go OTT with it. We'll go back to this east side bit. Plonk that there. Into that. Maybe another one of them, and then a curve to actually end the track. Done. Alright, so that's my masterwork. It's kind of basic track here. Once that's done, you then save and exit. So we'll overwrite that, and then you can go into the advanced editor, and this is where you can lay other stuff on the ground. You pick your car as well, because it'll want you to test stuff here as well. So we can just load this up. All right, so I would recommend if you're going to use the editor here, you want to use the keyboard and mouse, honestly, because it's just much, much easier. You'll see that's the starting point of the race, and this is the direction that they're going to be starting in. And then you press Enter to open up the item browser, and you've got all sorts of things. So if I wanted to start, I could, I can maybe have, I wouldn't want a high jump there, because that would just be silly. Or I could put explosive barrels right in the center, if I wanted. Seems like a fairly reasonable idea. Unfortunately, the controls here use sort of WAS and D setup, which is a bit awkward, honestly. I mean, the, the mouse is used to kind of rotate things as opposed to move them around, so it's not the ideal setup for an editor, honestly. All right. I can then go back. I can go back to the item browser, and you'll see there's all sorts of things to the side here. Jumps, targets, unbreakables, breakables, explosives, and so on and so forth. So if I wanted to put a sand pile in the middle of the road, like a douchebag, then I could do that. There we go. Sand pile is now in the middle of the road. And then, once you have sort of decided things, you can actually press tab to immediately free drive. As you can see, this apparently is what happens in my track as a result of that, because I've put explosive barrels sodding everywhere. I also have a feeling I'm going in the wrong direction. Yes, that's exactly what I'm doing. You can end up in some very awkward spots, as you can see. But it's interesting to be able to put it together, and the, the track seems cohesive, as far as I can tell anyway, aside from these weird green things. I guess they, they might just be in the editor there. Okay, that's something that's a little bit weird. Did you see that? I just want to have a look at the jump there. It seems to be suspended in midair. Yes, I may have placed that in the wrong place. <laughs> Just a thought, I probably balked that up. But anyway, you get the idea. The editor's fairly easy to use. It's pretty powerful. I do wish that they'd made the advanced editor work better with mouse and keyboard. It's it's just a bit dodgy. I would prefer a better setup with that. Use the mouse in a better way. I, I suppose it is a console game, so you're going to run into those problems. But for the most part, they got the interface right for PC. It's just that bit that well isn't and i would love to see them fix that perhaps in a future patch it's not the worst thing in the world you'd get used to it after a while but it could certainly go a lot better i think 
Now, once you've got that set up, you can then incorporate it into your city. Other people can visit your city and play in it, and you can change the event options. So there you've got Shindo Racing, Frag Attack, Drift Attack, Time Attack, Domination. And you can change your time of day, number of laps, up to 10, traffic on or off, number of opponents, and then your vehicle class that's going to be in it, as well as your difficulty. Which, by the looks of it, you want to try and keep on easy, because the AI is an absolute nightmare. But... Looking at it, it's certainly not bad, actually. It's, uh, it seems like a pretty damn awesome game. I, It's, I suppose, kind of unfortunate that it costs this much because I would think on PC it's probably going to have a pretty low population. I'm going to see if we can find any games in the multiplayer. I suppose when you release a game like this, especially a Ridge Racer game on PC at full price, you can't really expect people to jump on it. It's like, oh, I was just so desperate to get a new Ridge Racer game. And actually, it's kind of a shame it's called Ridge Racer to begin with, because it's got... Ridge Racer has just no presence. No presence at all on PC. If they called it a flat-out game, great. But the thing is, as you're probably aware, Flat Out 3, the latest one, which apparently is not very good, was not made by these guys. Also, if it was maybe called a burnout game, it would probably do well, but I think it might end up suffering as a result of its marketing, which would kind of suck. All right, well, I guess we're doing a 1v1 race then, which is not all that enjoyable. I'm very surprised that it started with only that. I guess it gives a 40-second countdown, and if the game had more population, this would be less of a problem, but... And, um, I'm not so keen on the idea that it takes only 40 seconds to start a game and you can end up with just two people in it because that's not very fun at all is it i like races with more than two people as otherwise you end up seeing absolutely nothing oh well, never mind we can try the multiplayer and just see if there's any glaring issues with it and there we go all right so i guess i'm driving that don't really have much of a choice even gives you 20 seconds to pick the one car you have available to you. What the hell's the point in that? Lord knows. Okay. Come on. Alright. Let's see how this works. If it works. Ah, night time. Less obnoxious lighting effects. Oh, never mind. All right, here we go. Is the other guy even driving? Yes, he is. Okay, great. The problem is as well, if you're in a two-player race, you're not going to be able to build up a lot of power. Wow, actually, the lighting effects are even more obnoxious in the night. Wow. Oh, it's like so much shiny. It's like, I don't think that was apps, honestly, all that necessary, really. There we go. I have power, and I'm way ahead of this guy here as well. But I'll probably give this guy a free win because I have no intention of completing a race with only two people in it. It's not that enjoyable, sadly. So, that is Ridge Racer Unbounded, ladies and gents. It's an interesting hybrid of Ridge Racer, Flat Out, Burnout, and Track Mania. Doesn't require the precision of Track Mania, that's probably for the best. I don't know, man. I'm not, I'm not a big fan of Track Mania. It's not the kind of game that I would play, but I can definitely see the value of it. And some people play it professionally. It requires an awful lot of skill, and I respect that, but I prefer my arcade style of races, which this game does seem to provide. Being able to blow up buildings is kind of fun. And the fact that it unlocks shortcuts for you is even better. Also, one other thing, you probably noticed this, but I really like the way that it minimizes the HUD by putting all sorts of good information on the sides of buildings. This is not unique. It's been done in previous games. Splinter Cell would be a good example of that. I can't even see anything. <laughs> Jeez, there's so much bloom. But, oh, well, never mind. Ah, destroy the cinema. Yes. Violence, glorious violence. But yeah, it's a nice system. It's really nicely presented. It's a genuinely fun arcade racer, and I wouldn't let the name Rich Racer put you off. Maybe the price tag might, for some people, certainly. You may want to wait for it to go down in price a bit, but the actual game itself is really, really good, and that's surprising. I wasn't expecting to find myself saying, hey, a Rich Racer game's so good, especially after the abomination that's on the PS Vita. Don't buy that. This, on the other hand, is kick-ass. So, once again, Bugbear delivers. 
I suppose we shouldn't expect anything less from those guys. They never really failed to do so. Wow, the other guys just left the race entirely. Well, that's a waste of time, isn't it? So there you go. Bridge Racer, unbounded. Still not sure if it's really a word. My name's been Total Biscuit, and I will see you next time.